We're going to talk about the possibility of using adult stem cell therapy for treatment of cerebral palsy, or a CP. This condition um, is usually childhood onset, and it's associated primarily with disorders of movement. That's what palsy means, disorder of movement. The incidence is approximately 2 per 1,000 births, and it is believed to be caused by damage to the brain in the perinatal period, primarily as a result of hypoxia or lack of oxygen. Stem cell therapy is particularly exciting for treatment of cerebral palsy because it offers the possibility of regenerating neurons and damaging, healing the damaged brain. So stem cell therapy has been used for decades in treatment of leukemias and bone marrow abnormalities. Basically a bone marrow transplant is a type of adult stem cell therapy. More recently, Adult stem cells have been used in the clinic in the U.S. and other places in the world for treatment of other things besides blood disorders. For example, adult stem cells are now in clinical trials for graft versus host, for Crohn's disease, for liver failure, for heart failure, and so on. The stem cells, adult stem cells, are safe. More than a thousand people have been treated and followed up with no adverse effects associated to the stem cells and potentially they are effective. Now, stem cells have already been used for treatment of cerebral palsy. The, um, the child in the picture here with President Bush was actually treated with his one stem cells. Who The child had uh, um, cerebral palsy and the cerebral palsy was apparently cured. At least this is what the parents said and Barack Obama also made a statement uh, to this. Now. Let's take a look at cord blood and why would cord blood have such an effect. Well, first of all, we do know that cord blood it can be used effectively in treating stroke, at least in animal models. And the cord blood stem cell is a CD34 cell, which is known to provide growth factors that stimulate the formation of new neurons and also makes new blood vessels in order to allow for the brain to heal itself properly. So um, here is an example of making new blood vessels after administration of cord blood, CD34 cells. This is an animal model in which a stroke was induced in the animal by ligating the artery that feeds the brain. One of the arteries, the middle cerebral artery, the um, animals on the left where it says B received stem cells, CD34 stem cells, and as you can see there's a lot of new blood vessels where the blue arrows point. Animals on the right received uh, cells which are not stem cells but cord blood cells and as you can see there's not a lot of new blood vessels made. On the right hand panel where it says angiography score this is quantification of how many blood vessels were made and as you can see the control where it says PBS it means phosphate buffer saline those ones had little new blood vessels. The CD34 negative fraction the cells which are cord blood cells but are not stem cells they made a little bit of new blood vessels but not a lot and of course the CD34 induced potent blood vessel production. Um, if you look at the mouse of the, bra of the brain of the mouse after the administration of stem cells you can see in control animals on the left uh, what appears to be a, a gap where neural tissue used to be. The animals which received the stem cells uh, that brain damage, the infarct, is not present because of the healing process. Now, looking at actually cerebral palsy, uh, this is a publication in which the Le Levine, Levine model of cerebral palsy was tested. Basically, what this is is seven-day-old rats are, um, expo are ligated. The, there is lack of oxygen is um, made in the brain of these rats because the common left common car carotid artery is ligated, is tied up, and then the mice are exposed to low oxygen concentration for 80 minutes. And this is the two parts of the brain. Uh, B represents the area of the brain in which there is damage, and C, uh, there is damage because of the ligation, and C represents the part which is further away from the ligated artery and does not have damage. And as you can see in B, the um, CD, CD68 positive cells, these are green cells that infiltrate, they are macrophage cells, and the red cells are caspase 3 positive, meaning that they're undergoing apoptosis. So you see the cell death, neuronal cell death in this model, and you see macrophages entering into the brain. 
and these mice have the symptoms of spastic paresis and resemble like the condition of cerebral palsy. So using this animal model, I mean rats, sorry, not mice, rats, um, and using this animal model of cerebral palsy, we, the authors of the study, administered 10 million human cord blood cells. And these cells were given systemically. They were given intraperitoneally. And then the animals were assessed. First question is, do the human cells actually cross a blood-brain barrier? And as you can see here, in B, uh, so green, the green color represents human cells. Cells that are stained for HLA DR positive. And uh, the red represents uh, the GFAP, which is basically astrocytes. And as you can see, in the part of the area in which there was damage in the part of the brain, those green cells, the human cells, have entered the brain successfully, even though they were administered systemically. On the right, you can see the part of the brain that's not damaged. No human cells are there. So we do know from this study, in a reproducible manner, that the stem cells can home. Now, do they actually treat? Well, in this rat model, you can tell the severity of the brain damage by the distance between the toes. Because if the brain is damaged and you have continuous contraction of the muscles, then the toe, toe distance is smaller. So as you can see, um, the animals which were controlled, while well, the animals which were controlled and given stem cells, they have a certain toe distance. Now, after you induce a lesion in the brain, and you can see the toe distance becomes smaller, this is because the muscles are chronically contracted. If you administer stem cells, you can see this abnormality is repaired. And this is uh, an example of um, an efficacy test which is reproducible and shows that there is some positive effects to stem cell therapy.